The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the Cashman Wellness Show today. This may be very interesting uh, because it relates uh, especially uh, to the present time. Normally, uh, how, what we do, what we eat, how we exercise, how we uh, think affects our health greatly, but especially uh, in this pandemic across the world, you notice, for example, 92% of the people that died in New York uh, had a, a, some chronic illness. Uh, and uh, so majority of that could have been uh, prevented. In Chicago, it's around 75%. Uh, Louisiana, uh, New Orleans, about 80%. In other words, if you follow the wellness path, which I will teach you today, your odds of catching the virus or dying from the virus will go way down. You'll get rid of a disease, most likely diabetes, and the 30 disease attached uh, to it, uh, not catch the virus too. I mean, this is a life-saving talk we're having today. Uh, and uh, so, I'm going to call this the road uh, to wellness, which can apply to anyone, including children across the world, adults, men and women, newborns, unborn babies. This, and I called it uh, the road, how to get there. It starts at a very young age. So, the, the first, so I, I really created the wellness wheel, I call it the uh, uh, magic eight. You can uh, get a copy of this uh, in Fort Wayne uh, from the Three Rivers Pharmacy by Concordia High School. You can go in there and request a copy. Uh, but I'll be discussing this wheel, I call it the magic uh, eight, in, in some detail. So let's start on the road, <laughs> okay? Uh, uh, and I explained it further in other YouTube shows, TV shows that, that I have. You can go to Rudy Cashman YouTube. Uh, hundreds of TV shows show up. Uh, so there'll be further explanation of each individual uh, behind me. Uh, the, let's start with uh, number one, you have to assume some self uh, a responsibility, a choice. You must become interested in your health. You can't just uh, see food, put it down, and I think as to what you're eating, for example. We'll explain that in more uh, detail. So you have to have some self responsibility. You must participate uh, in, in what you're doing. And the majority of that is I have to give you information so that you can indeed make choices. Uh, so I go in the order. Order of importance, uh, number one for me would be nutrition. Uh, that's a green one that you see up there. Uh, and uh, what are you eating? You have to pay attention to the type of food uh, uh, that uh, you are consuming. Generally, 
I would uh, recommend uh, uh, people eat low carbohydrate nutritious food, okay? And actually, so it's actually called low carb moderate fat, yeah? There are good fats. You gotta learn what the good fats are. There are bad fats, there are good fats. Uh, you can go online uh, and watch a YouTube, for example, of a Dr. Fung, F-U-N-G, Jason Fung. Uh, he, he will explain it to you in, in actually more detail. So I'd like you to eat nutrient-dense food. That's fruits of color. Fruits of color are your mother, okay? Because they have in them uh, nutrients, vitamins, uh, that make them, they run the machinery of your body and that they would be uh, fresh, unprocessed. Your enemy is processed food. Once food has been stripped of its nutrients and they remove the, uh, the, the brand, the covering and the, and the, and the germ uh, and you're eating uh, just the endosperm, that's mainly the carbohydrates uh, in there, it, it eventually gets metabolized to sugar. You want to eat the whole thing, okay? A good way is to start a day with a smoothie, uh, for example, and, 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 and learn a little bit about them. You can find that on my YouTube uh, uh, shows because there's so many nutrients that you'll be meeting your nutrient and need and, and your appetite will go uh, uh, down. If you're a diabetic to begin with, you might check your blood sugar, make sure uh, that is okay. Any diabetics listening who want to get rid of the diabetes, six weeks you can do it. Look at my other YouTube shows, I'll show you that. But you need to increase your testing. Best thing to do is have, have one of these monitors uh, in you where you can just take your, your phone and check your blood sugar before and after you're eating, after, before and after exercising. Uh, uh, for example, so blood testing for them becomes important, but for, the, for those of us who don't have di diabetes, uh, that w wouldn't be necessary, but many of us ha have diabetes and are unhealthy and don't know about it, so we have to be a little bit careful. So nutrition is extremely important. i tell you a good habit too, uh, is to distance the time between your meals. That's, that's easy. You may, they may call that fasting, intermittent fasting, but uh, that's not what I'm really talking about. I, it's sort of 16-8. So if you uh, eat dinner, say, at 6 o'clock, uh, uh, and uh, then you don't eat your breakfast till uh, 9 or 10, uh, you've had a long period of time uh, where you ran out of glycogen and carbohydrates uh, and you start to empty your fat cells because the insulin level drop like anything and if, if you do have a bit of a weight problem it, it goes away so we're not asking you to skip a day or half a day or anything like that I'm just saying length of the time uh, eat in this window of time I, I do it automatically uh, in, anymore I eat two meals a day if I get hungry, eat a few nuts or some good guacamole, some good fats, uh, for example, uh, in between. But that's a great way if you feel like I like to be healthy, lose some weight. But you got to get those nutrients in you, okay? Uh, and, and, and like I said, if you're a diabetic, you want to get rid of it. About six weeks, you get rid of it. You eat, you eat like that. So let's continue around uh, the circle and into go into physical fitness. And uh, do I want you to run uh, marathons? No, I don't want you to run uh, uh, marathons. Uh, so let's go around the circle to the uh, uh, light uh, uh, purple one there, uh, perhaps, uh, and uh, a physical uh, this. I tell you an easy way to stay physically fit uh, Take a walk every day. I take a walk every day, okay? I play pickleball and tennis too, but let's talk about walking. Early in the morning, uh, generally, I, I take a walk. I, 
uh, look at the trees, uh, sing to the at me, the red-winged blackbird is tweeting at me. Man, two different tweets. Every their territorial. So I'm relaxing. So if you have a way of taking a walk early in the day, a good idea. You can do it late in the day. But I'm just telling you uh, what I do. And I'll be speaking more about uh, that later. You're burning some calories doing that. And also it's good for relaxation. But suppose you're working and you don't have time or you don't like to exercise or you can't, for example, uh, I wrote a book, I'd like to hold it up for you, called Sitting Disease is Killing Us. Many of us, you know, up and then we have to do cooking, for example, or uh, then we get too tired and we lay down and we've got no exercise. But the way I like to teach ex exercise, I, I divide it into three uh, different things, okay? First, we look at basic metabolic rate. And that depends on our size. If we're real big, our BMR burns a lot of calories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty well set. It's 40%. If this is your calorie burn for the day, okay? That's 40% of it. It changes very little from time to time. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's hard to change. Then we have the calories you lose from what type of food that you eat. Uh, eating fat, you burn only four, four calories per hundred uh, uh, from the metabolism of it. Mm -hmm. Protein, a little higher, about 20. Okay? And then for complex carbohydrates, for example, it takes quite a bit of energy to metabolize that, uh, but the total calorie burn, if you, say, eat uh, uh, 2,000 calories a day, uh, how much of that are you going to lose from metabolizing it to get it into your body? Not that much, okay? Not that much. That you're eating. I like to call activity of living, activity of living. Things that you have to do every day, and if you think about that, and if you can increase that, for example, if you increase calorie burn 200 calories a day, you know what that's in a year? Mm -hmm. 20 pounds, well, so you're gonna lose some weight, that's a big one. And that makes it easy without having to go to a gym. I mean, I like you to go to a gym. Uh, I, I like you to do other, other things. Uh, but uh, activity of living is a good thing. So what I include uh, in activities of living. First of all, if you stand up, like when the phone rings, or you're cooking, or you're working with a stand-up desk, triples the calorie burn. Mm -hmm. If you're just standing up, uh, burns, say, 10 calories. I work now because just the muscles to hold you up, or even just to uh, uh, set you up, uh, it causes some uh, calorie burn. And if you add them up bit by bit, for, you can keep some light weights uh, use them at home or on the weekend or at night or keep them under your desk at work and do some gentle workouts with them. Another good way is to just do a yoga position, uh, maybe uh, stand up, bend the knees and just stand there like that for two or three minutes. Just think of the amount of muscle contraction that's occurred, you're gonna burn a, a lot of calories. That's a good habit for you. Park your car far away, for example. Uh, walk the dog. I myself, I do have more time compared to when I had neurosurgery, I had no time at all. I have more time now, but part of my morning routine, 
from 6.30 to 7.30 in the morning before I uh, uh, take a walk. Uh, I played the piano 15 minutes and I noticed my ability is increased. Okay, uh, and then I have a TV down there and I play some tap <laughs> dancing videos. Yeah, and, and, and I've watched many of them now and, and I've taken a lesson or two, more than a lesson or two. And uh, I love it now. So to the point that, that I can just listen to music like the Bee Gees <laughs> and I tap dance to it without thinking. So now it's really relaxing. I don't pay any attention to what steps I'm doing. I've done so much of it uh, that uh, I'm thinking of going to Promenade Park when the, we're allowed to be out there and the weather's a little better and maybe I can get the audience to participate. And I mean, isn't it, wouldn't that be a fun exercise? Wouldn't you like to see all of Fort Wayne tap dancing? We need a stress reliever. Wouldn't that be a great one? Wouldn't it be nice if some ethnic or racial group took that up as their habit, and they went out there and they tap dance all the time in the park along the water. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? So uh, if you can increase your activity of living, which could be uh, uh, anything you can think of, you know, from, from dancing and walking in, 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 uh, in weights and parking far away and just standing up, uh, you're going to a lot of calories and it's real easy to lose weight over time without any big deal, okay? I didn't say cut back uh, the amount you're eating or anything like that at all. So exercise uh, is a big one, and if you can increase your activity living, remember what I said, your basic metabolic rate that depends on your body size. Those are calories you burn because of your size. If you decide to lose weight or get healthy by not eating, you go into starvation response. You know what happens to the basic metabolic rate? Your body thinks he's starving. It drops the BMR and makes, yes. So your automatic calorie burn that you have every day, you can count on and working. That's why when people uh, sometimes uh, uh, start eating and, uh, and they think uh, that all of a sudden the weight loss is not con continuing, uh, for example, because the BMR has dropped and you got to eat a lot less uh, or exercise a lot more to lose weight. The basic metabolic weight wages. So what I'm asking you to do is to eat a nutrient-dense way of eating, increase your AOL, Maybe spread your time a little bit between meals. You know, I call it nutritarian diet. But when you spread time between meals, I call it keto terrain diet. I'm not asking you to miss days or, or weeks or starve yourself. No, I'm just talking about spreading the time between the meals. Uh, if you're on diabetic medication, you gotta be more careful. Uh, because your blood sugar can drop more than th that you'd want. So you have to speak to your doctor if you're a diabetic, okay? But otherwise, just to spread time between meals, quite safe, with rare exception, okay? But remember, if you're on diabetic medications, uh, you're under somebody else's control, and it can be a little more difficult. Let's continue around the wheel now, and, uh, and let's speak a little bit about Spirituality, spirituality. I think uh, that uh, uh, you see on there uh, in the light uh, uh, blue, uh, number four, we go around our, our road to wellness. We're getting there, we're, we're, get, we're getting there. Uh, but I think spirituality uh, is important in a person's life. That doesn't mean uh, that you have to believe in a certain religion or a certain God, well, it's up to you. I, I hope that you do. I highly support that, that, that you do. But we're all different. So I'm not saying uh, that we need to follow any one religion. But since we were speaking about fasting before, 
fasting goes back a few thousand years. Some religions are characterized by fasting in Lent in different times, and, and, uh, and, and, I, and I think uh, that's great. So it, it's even in spirituality. But belief affects the neurotransmitters of your body, okay? Our circuitry, our stress circuitry, our thought circuitry is greatly affected by our belief, as long as the beliefs are uh, reasonable and, and supportive, uh, it, it has great value. It causes actually physical changes at a chemical level in your body. Positive thinking, Norman Vincent Peale in New York, for example, whose church I even visited, uh, wrote many books about it. You can if you think you can. Uh, for example, power, positive thinking, all came from a minister, Norma Vincent Peale, in New York City. Yeah, and he had a psychology institute next to the church because he found that many people go to church and the number increases with stress out lives that he's trying to solve the problems. Uh, and and uh, I, he's not alive today, but I visit his church out of respect for all the great books uh, that he wrote. Uh, one of his assistant ministers happened to move to Fort Wayne and gave me a copy autographed by Norma Vincent Peale of all his books, including his wife, Ruth. I have them in my library. Wonderful uh, books. I even have a picture of me outside the church where he's there pointing his finger and me in a fancy shirt jumping up, touching his finger. I took a picture and that's the opening page uh, of my computer to show my respect uh, to him, okay? Uh, so how we, our thought process uh, is very important. If we're stressed all the time, for example, we need something to feel good. What are we going to do? Eat sugar. And what's that, what's that going to do? Could make us unhealthy. Stressed people are characterized by a pot belly. Mm -hmm. One of the causes of a pot belly. Uh, they're just trying to feel good, you know. It's, it's, uh, I've heard people say that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. Who would believe that? I debated that once uh, with Emily Bowler sitting right at this table who's written a number of books too, works for Dr. Furman, and I thought she won the, the debate. It, it's uh, affecting the neurotransmitters of our brain, makes us uh, uh, feel better. So I think spirituality can play a huge part uh, in our lives. There's another book, since we're speaking about spirituality here, uh, that you might like to read. Again, I respect all religions, okay? And this is a little more along the line of the Christian religion, which is great, but it applies to me uh, to a lot of religion, okay? Uh, it's called the Daniel Plan, okay? The Daniel Plan. Uh, okay? A book you might, uh, if you're a very spiritual, religious person, if you're a minister, for example, uh, and you have a group in your church that needs to be more healthy. Uh, it's a book written by Rick Warren, a minister. 18,000 people belong to his church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He hired Dr. Daniel Amen and Mark Hyman to write this book. Well, I happen to like both of those authors to begin with. I had read their books before they uh, wrote for him because what they teach is what I'm, what I'm teaching. Uh, and 
But then uh, Rick Warren uh, took verses out of the Bible and added uh, to the way become healthy. And what he's basically doing can apply to all religions. Okay, we're not pushing anyone originally. What actually happened with uh, Rick Warren, he would send people to this large church all over the world to improve the, uh, uh, to spread Christianity and improve, improve the lives of the people all over the world, many countries, okay? So one day he was baptizing about 536 people in a river uh, near, I think it was near San Francisco, and he, be, he took them under the water with them, they all had clothing on, and he too, and they all came back up, and he looked around. This is the opening line of his book. We're all fat. Opening line of his book, the opening line. But then he did something about it. Then he became more knowledgeable. He hired these two people uh, to uh, write this book. And he took words out of the Bible uh, to, uh, f for, of course, Daniel, as you know, the Daniel story out of the Bible. For example, we were just talking to the dictator, if he could eat healthy and not eat the dictator's uh, food, for example. Uh, and and they, uh, when the dictator changed, they both survived. So it, it, and then the multiple, in other words, you can teach good health, physically, spiritually, really like, like I'm doing, uh, and use quotes of the Bible while you're doing it. And he uses the basic five F's. Uh, uh, number one, faith, okay. But they, they're, actually, there are about 50 different statements in the Bible on nutrition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I looked it up, and uh, 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 about uh, 50. Uh, and then uh, he's, he's food. He tells you what good food is, which is mainly nutrient-dense food, like I've been saying. I didn't say vegetarian or vegan, no meat. It's just organic meat, limited amount. Because if you eat more than the protein that you need, guess what? It gets converted to sugar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you only need so much uh, 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 meat. Uh, so we, he calls it the five F's. So faith, uh, uh, food, fitness is, is number three for them. And we already spoke about uh, 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 fitness. And then focus that you focus. Remember my number one is you must participate. So uh, uh, focus on the problem. And there's number five is friends. Uh, and that's a big one in, in the, in the uh, Daniel plan that churches that teach that, and I participate in some that teach it, is what they do is form groups, five to 10 people or so, and they meet in somebody's house maybe once a month or maybe every Sunday, depending on their situation. I know somebody in New Haven did that and changed a lot of people, changed a lot of people. Uh, and they discuss the whole book and, and you can actually get online and, and, and plans and recipes and cookbooks, everything to really get you in, involved. And the people have become uh, very, uh, very uh, uh, healthy, so that you can get healthy through spirituality and as a way of teaching it through the Daniel plan. And we're not picking any one religion. I, I recommend the book to anybody, if any re religion, the Old Testament, New Testament, whether you're um, a Hindu or, or, or whether uh, Hebrew, Jewish, it doesn't matter. It, it can. We want you to be healthy. And the thing it really brings up here, which is the way I look at it too, is that he's saying is that your God, no matter what you believe, uh, really is that your body, your body belongs to whatever you believe in, okay? So if you're not eating right or exercise, 
you're not respecting your religion. They'll even say in this book, the body of Christ within you. So when you're not exercising, you're not eating right. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, concerning because I've been to churches and I've been to funerals uh, where people had their legs amputated, uh, you know, whole families, all had diabetes, all, and some of them were ministers, some are parents of ministers, some are brothers of ministers, and they are not respecting the body of God. I'm just trying to get you motivated uh, that you indeed, remember number one we showed before, you have some responsibility for your health. You can't just eat, 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 eat and take the doctor's prescription and that really gain the knowledge to be healthier. And I'm giving you uh, the knowledge. So let's continue on our, our magic eight. Uh, 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 we've been through four, uh, and I encourage you to read the book of the uh, uh, Daniel plan, okay? Uh, so now, number five, it's a way of life a process, okay? That's the bottom middle one there. And uh, it, it's a process. This is the way uh, that you've decided uh, to live. Uh, and uh, if you need a copy of this wellness reel, you, like I said, you can get the pharmacy if you see me, ask for a copy. Uh, and, and we'll give it to you or, or, or send it to you. So, uh, th that you include the, the whole family. Yes. In what you eat, what you do, how you exercise will affect your family members. Mm -hmm. They may copy you, especially if you're a parent. Uh, if you have a, uh, a child within you, what you're eating will change your biome, your gut bacteria that run your health, but will also affect the baby living within you. You are writing the genetic script of the baby. Mm -hmm. Whether the child is sick or gets cancer or is diabetic or is overweight or underweight, is determined by what you do. Mm -hmm by what you do. So it's a, a, how you're running your family. Uh, something else I suggest too, if you possibly can, sit down with the family for dinner at the same time. For some people, it's impossible. Uh, I didn't do it all my life. I remember doing it though. I'm sorry I ever stopped doing it got too busy, or I, I don't even remember the reasons. Uh, but if when you're sitting down at the table, at least once a day at the same table, uh, then you can share anxieties and stresses and spread the love, the, uh, love around. Dr. Hyman, whose name is on this book, on the Daniel Plan, he published many books. He's head of wellness at the Cleveland Clinic, very respected uh, um, individual. In one of his books, he writes uh, that, and he was a, a busy uh, doctor besides a, a wellness doctor, okay? Internist, I forget, cardiologist. Uh, his family would not start the evening meal till he was home. That may be impossible for some of us, but if somehow you can get this done, it have tremendous benefits for you. I will bet you the stresses and the problems with the kids and divorce rates, ability to sleep, all those things would improve. Relationships would improve. That was his habit. They would not start the cooking of the meal till he was there. 
So he knows how to cook. Yeah. So learning how to cook, everyone should learn how to cook. Okay? Uh, if you don't know how to do it, ask the spouse to teach you. If not, go to cooking school, read a book, uh, pick out some recipes that you uh, plan to uh, uh, follow. I, I think uh, Mark Hyman doing this with his family, he makes a big deal of it. I totally uh, agree. So uh, make it a way of life. Uh, then number six on the wheel here, uh, what did I write? The education, when did it begin? When did your body start to get educated? He was starting to get educated soon after conception. Your DNA, which determines the construction of your body, uh, uh, sends a message to the RNA, which then expresses it, but it has telomeres. In other words, the DNA has a long string at the end called telomeres, and the end of that can be altered by what happens to that individual, whether it's an infant, a newborn, an adult. We can affect our telomeres, the RNA, the expressors of our body and our metabolism. And the good news is, when we are born, we have only written 5%, 5% of our genetic script. What an opportunity. We're not just stuck with the chromosomes and genes of our two parents, okay? We are stuck maybe at 5% at best, and the 95% is written by what the parents are doing, especially the mother after uh, conception. And then at birth, what we do from there, that genetic script will be written by our activities. The wellness wheel, the wellness wheel. Yeah. Well, what are we eating? What are we feeding the child? Remember our biome, our trillions of bacteria that are alive, living in us to, today, run the machinery of our body. Mm -hmm. They have much more DNA than we have, 10 times as much. So what we are eating, what we're feeding these bacteria, determines the type of bacteria living there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that we keep that in mind if we're taking drugs, if we're consuming alcohol, if we're smoking uh, c cigarettes, uh, if we're stressed all the time gambling, or constantly uh, on the phone, uh, and, and stress hormones are being secreted in the body. Uh, uh, it, affects the, it affects the child living within you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so education, when does it begin? At conception. But the golden opportunity is only 5% of that genetic script has been written. Isn't that great? Yeah. But it's also important. We can just constantly, when you light up a cigarette, that nicotine affects every cell in your body, every cell like that. And within seconds, it withdraws, and you get to light up again, and affects the cell again. So you're really writing the genetic script, genetic script 
of the person living within you or sitting next to you, breathing in what you're doing, for example, or affected by your behavior, for example. Alcohol, for example, kills brain cells. As a neurosurgeon, I treated thousands of patients whose brain had been damaged by alcohol. It would literally, if this was your brain, okay, it would literally shrink the brain. And eventually, fluid would collect, pressure would build, and I'd have to drill a hole. And I would let out some yellow looking fluid, not clots, it's yellow looking fluid, and the brain be down that much off the skull. I take the fluid out, air would come in, because it's a negative space, and slowly spinal fluid would build up, but the brain did not come back completely the majority of the time. So alcohol, besides being destructive to your uh, muscles and your liver uh, and your heart and your kidneys, is a brain killer. Is a brain killer. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Okay. Does that mean zero alcohol? Well, maybe not, but recently I saw a paper said any alcohol is bad because it causes cardiomyopathy. So does a glass of wine kill your brain a day? I don't know, maybe, maybe not, uh, but it affects your heart. So any alcohol uh, is uh, risky. Let's continue uh, further around the wheel here. Uh, and, uh, and this next part is uh, very uh, uh, interesting. Integrating the mind, body, and the spirit. Integrating the mind, body, and the spirit. That sort of would be uh, at uh, 9 o'clock on this uh, magic gate. And uh, I became interested in that years ago uh, because as a neurosurgeon, I saw a big volume of patients. And taking their histories, I always wondered that a lot of the things I was seeing, they weren't coming in there saying, I'm stressed. They were coming in there saying, my neck hurts or my back hurts. Uh, and, uh, and eventually, I woke up and I ran across a book out of a physical therapy book that spoke about Candace Pert, P-E-R-T, Candace Pert, and she wrote a book called Molecules, Chemicals, of Emotion. So I ordered the book and I read it. It totally changed my world. That's been now probably 35, 40 years ago, maybe more. Totally changed the way I looked at patients. She was doing research at National Institutes of Health a men's society, <laughs> she wrote in a book. She was looking through a lecton microscope, really highly magnified, and she was looking at cells, the actual cells themselves, and she saw on them little receptors wiggling in the wind, just wiggling away, and then she discovered that every cell in our body, talking about billions, got these dancing receptors. What does that mean? Then she realized these receptors were catching the chemicals in your body, the hormones, the neuropeptides. Mm -hmm neurotransmitters that send messages around your body, all over the brain. Trillions we're talking about. How you think could produce hormones, neuropeptides, neurotransmitters. They float in the body through the blood, the venous, lymphatic system send messages down nerves, the sympathetic, the stretcher, the stressor, 
the parasympathetic, the relaxer, the acetylcholine. So our mind is connected to our body. Hallelujah. The way medicine still is practiced today, they don't even know that. I say, I said it then, and I say it more than ever, 70% of the people, 60, 80% of the people go see a doctor. My neck hurts, my back hurts, my arm itches or whatever. is an expression of their neurotransmitters, hormones, neuropeptides. But they don't come in and say, my neuropeptides are bothering me. Uh, they say, my neck hurts, my back hurts. We get an MRI, and we see some changes of aging. We say, oh, you need a back fusion. It goes on all day long. Even today, even today, there's not much money in what I'm saying. There's a lot of money in fusion your back. I'm just going to speak the truth here. I've been in that business. I know that business. So I think before you get your back fused to operate on, Unless it's killing there or you're paralyzed, you can operate right away. Uh, maybe get a second opinion, okay? Or maybe read this book. Uh, I wrote a book on it after Candace Pert called Welcome to Your Mind Body, okay? All right. That, I wrote that after summarizing my experience in Candace Pert works and other work. Uh, it changed my life, no doubt about it, uh, and, and, it, it and it's correct. I, it's, it's in many other books now, but that was sort of 30 years ago. That was new. I faced a lot of resistance, no doubt about it, especially the pain people. And it's still going on today. You need your back injected instead of a massage or uh, relaxing uh, uh, things a person uh, can do. So stress, that's... have tremendous effects on your body, okay? Uh, stress affects the, the, your emotions, uh, uh, your body, your pain perception. Uh, and uh, Hans, in Canon 1910, published the science on acute stress, okay? And then after that chronic stress, was described in you know, 1960, 1970 or so, uh, uh, and stress that's long term. Okay, acute stress, the tiger runs at you, they eat you or not, and it's over. So uh, if you're alive, it doesn't affect you that much anymore, but it affects the sympathetic nervous system, okay? Uh, your blood sugar goes, goes up, uh, your bladder shuts down, your brain gets um, uh, activated, your heart rate increases, your blood pressure goes up. Uh, that's acute stress, but it's over. Chronic stress uh, is long-term. It's something that's chewing at you every day. It just gets a little more acute. Uh, and uh, in some of us, it dominates our lives. That's why a lot of people smoke, chronic stress. But the darn trouble is uh, they smoke and, and uh, the nicotine level goes up and the endorphins go up and they feel real good and then they met gets metabolized and it crashes and I got to light up again. That's the trouble. So the people who use cigarettes for stress relief, they're like this. They're like that all day long, 24 hours a day, Years at a time, you can see why some people can't get it off of them, okay? About 18% of the people smoke. So if you can convince a child or an adult not to take it up, uh, it's a big thing. It's, it's, it's a, it can be a horrible thing. Uh, I remember this, I lived in Germany as a child, so I was visiting a German couple, a beautiful couple in Boston, lived next to my cousin. Oh, you got to meet them. So I meet them. As soon as you walk in the house, I could smell, I could smell the damage from the chemicals of smoking. It was everywhere. Beautiful couple. Okay. I go back to see my cousin two years later. 
this beautiful couple was dead, both of them. Mm-hmm. And their relatives couldn't sell the house. Why not? Secondary smoke. You destroy yourself economically. It was you know, smoky. Mm-hmm. What a sad story. But it occurs throughout the nation. Uh, and if, so smoking is something you should, you know, uh, try to avoid. Uh, so we spoke, how does the mind connect to the body? Uh, we have the nucleus of Kuban that's in the frontal lobe, one millimeter in size, that's all. Uh, that secretes dopamine that makes you feel good. How could you make that one feel better? Play pickleball like I did this morning. I took a walk in nature where I relate to nature. The birds are singing to me and I'm singing to them. That secretes dopamine and I feel great. If you go further back in the brain, uh, you you, uh, uh, then uh, secrete serotonin. Uh, That that would be, say, I play pickleball today, okay? And I I probably will feel good for a number of hours. That's because the back of the brain secretes some serotonin. That's a long-term stress reliever. But a lot of the serotonin is actually made in your gut. So what you're eating can affect how you feel. Mm-hmm. 75% of the serotonin molecule made in your gut. Your friends, the bacteria, your biome, your biome, they make it. Mm-hmm. So what you eat, uh, can, so uh, some people would call your gut your second brain. That's a point to that. So if we use Kenneth Pert's work, uh, uh, and uh, you see that with the mind-body connection, so then I wrote uh, this book about it, because uh, if you have symptoms and you go see a doctor, odds are that doctor will not know the mind-body connection. I go to the med school, uh, and, and uh, let me give one lecture a year. Okay. National, we can only teach what national improves. National doesn't improve it. Why don't they? Industry, Congress, money, pharmaceutical companies. There's a reason. I'm just telling you the truth. Uh, it's the way it is. It, I myself have been trying to change it. I've gotten somewhere. I've educated. I pass out knowledge to you on these TV shows, and we thank Public Access TV uh, for uh, allowing that the time, uh, but the odds are, unless you go see Dr. Hyman at the Cleveland Clinic and his wellness clinic, he gets it. A few doctors do, but most uh, don't understand the mind-body connection. They think everything is an x-ray, and then we work on the x-ray. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm just giving you a little bit of uh, 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 fair warning. So, you understand, uh, I think, the road to wellness, you have to participate in your health care, remember? Mm-hmm. Second opinions, reading, unless it's an emergency. You have to learn about nutrition. You can go to YouTube shows, Facebook, uh, Live to be 100, Rudy Cashman, or YouTube, Rudy Cashman, 1,000 TV shows, public access, thank you. Uh, physical fitness, spirituality, it's a way of life. Education of, uh, begins at, at, at conception. I want you to understand the mind-body uh, uh, connection. You, get a, you have to learn a lot about uh, 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 that. Uh, and then the last thing I want to bring up a little bit here uh, is proper testing. Uh, you frankly are, that's the last one, uh, at 11 o'clock. Okay, uh, to get proper testing done. You know, I see some people who I can tell through my vision, I learned a little bit too much, that uh, they may be um, a, a diabetic, uh, and, and they'll say my blood pressure is normal. But I'll tell you, if you're overweight, the odds of you not having diabetes extremely slim, 10% maybe. Incidentally, people who are perfectly normal, of normal weight, 20% or so, have diabetes anyway. And part of the reason, 
is they didn't test them because they look thin, that diabetes occurs before obesity, okay? The answer is to get a serum insulin. That's the, what it is. It's not really a blood sugar. And, and if you look at my other YouTube shows, you can read about diabetes in case you're concerned you might have it. Uh, certain racial groups, 90% of diabetes. Uh, the white community, probably 70%. 50%, 40% maybe know it, the rest don't know it because they have not been tested properly. So I want you to get proper testing. Get a glucose tolerance test and a insulin tolerance test. The two occur together. Uh, uh, get those, tell your doctor that's what I want and get them, even as a, get them on your children. They don't check kids for this. They use the HbA1c starting at age 10, uh, they miss a lot of kids on the road to diabetes. You can diagnose the road to diabetes and avoid 30 to 50 diseases by proper testing. Get it done as a child. I also want you to get kidney tests. Why is, is that? Because kidneys have five stages. Glomerular filtration rate, okay? Uh, 100 is normal, 15, or you need dialysis maybe 10 uh, uh, kidney transplant, because they're allowing people to come to stage four or so uh, without telling them uh, that through proper nutrition, exercise, maybe a little protein uh, supplement, they could stop. They could stop the progression of kidney disease. They can even reverse it a bit. I've recently run across a, a book called End of Renal Disease, written by a patient who had it uh, and looked up the literature. There's a thousand papers in that book, End of Diabetes by Lee Hull, H-U-L-L, -L, very thick book. Actually, it's quite uh, cheap. You can, you can read it uh, also uh, in, in uh, other books. Uh, so that I uh, want you to pay some attention to the results uh, of your creatine level, of your albumin uh, level, and your glomerular filtration rate, suppose you're stage four, it can still be stopped in reverse through proper nutrition. You can pick it up on some of my YouTube shows. They will not bring it up. Industry totally controls dialysis uh, and transplants, I think two companies. They financially control the whole thing, that they spend very little money and teaching you how to avoid kidney disease. I will teach it to you. So I think in, in summary, I'd like you to get this magic eight and, and maybe put it uh, on your refrigerator, on your wall, or and educate your whole family uh, 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 with it and, and uh, to learn more about what good food uh, is. Uh, sugar is really the booger and the hooker, uh, uh, but uh, there are good fats and bad fats. I want you to know the difference. And I think I mentioned to you a little bit, uh, you don't have to go into big time fasting, although it's many religions, okay? It's just to spread the time between your meals, 16 and eight, 16 hours, eight hours. Simple to do, I, 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 I do it. Uh, and in this time, uh, your glycogen, your insulin level drops and you'll go into fat metabolism you lose, you will double the rate of getting rid of any chronic disease that you, most chronic diseases which you have. Mm -hmm. It'll speed it up. You can get rid of type diabetes six weeks. Some might say uh, two months, depends how, how good, uh, uh, whether you, uh, but if, a little bit of fasting, a little bit, spreading the time, that's all, okay. Uh, will sp double the speed of getting rid of it. So it's, I don't want you to uh, accept di diabetes. I want you to get rid of it. I think we've given you some understanding here. I hope you watch my other uh, YouTube shows for further information. I hope you help spread the word. If you want me to lecture somewhere at your school or at your church, let me know. I don't charge anything. If you want to see me in person, see me at the Three Rivers Pharmacy. Uh, next to Concordia there. Uh, I see people for free uh, on, on, on Fridays, and I've 
and a lot of people lose their diabetes, don't accept diabetes. Get rid of it. I know how to teach it. Industry will not do it. Uh, and you'll rarely meet a provider who says, I will get rid of this disease for you. Most likely they will hand you a script, which makes many pharmaceutical companies very rich, uh, uh, and you got to pay for it. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, thanks for, for watching this show. I, I did this because I love you. Namaste. And I hope to see your eyes again <laughs> some other uh, show. Or maybe uh, you'll ask me to tap dance with you at Prominent Park for relaxation. And exercise. <laughs> Goodbye.